you doing, Lynn? I'm doing good. God, it's so great to talk to you. You're such a legend. <laughs> And that's when you're supposed to be like, I know. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. No, no. I, it's always really incredible to hear that. Thank you. So am I right in knowing you're actually on a movie set right now? Yes, I'm working actually with uh, Jeff Dylan Graham. He's directing and starring in this film called Psychosomatica. Oh, wow. That's a, that's a, that's a uh, ironic coincidence because I actually worked with Jeff on a... On a film, we did a scene together. I worked on Dorm of the Dead with him. I know he mentioned that to me. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to pop pop in this room later and say hi for a minute. Very okay, cool. Very good. So we were actually, right in the middle of we were in the middle of actually my death scene. <laughs> you know, that's always fun when you get to die on screen. You know. So are y'all bloody right now, Lynn? You know, actually, I managed not to get too bloody. <laughs> so that was that was good. So you're actually from Illinois, right? Yes, I was uh, born in uh, East St. Louis. Wow. But uh, Illinois is not right because the Internet Movie Database said Illinois. Uh, yeah, no, it, East St. Louis is in Illinois. In Illinois. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> That's St. not Louis. good. St. Louis is in Missouri, and the Mississippi River separates the two. Oh, okay. So actually, I'd rather have been born in St. Louis. It's <laughs> yeah. a much better place. Right. But... Uh, the truth is, I was born in East St. Louis. Yeah, uh, well, joke's on me. I lived in Illinois and didn't even realize that. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, uh, according to this, uh, the very first thing you did was actually something that was pretty historical, but you actually were uncredited, and that's I Drink Your Blood. Is that right? Yes. Um, you know, I think the reason that I was not credited for the movie was because... Is that the question? Yeah. Oh, is because when I first met David Durston, the director... The movie had already been written, and everyone had been cast. And David said, oh, you're so beautiful, and I've got to have you in my movie. And, uh, and, you know, and of course I didn't believe him because I had heard this now for like two years already. But he called me back and he said, yes, I'm going to put you in the movie and I'm going to make you a mute so I don't have to write any more lines. So he didn't want to write any more. Right. And I think that when the the um, people that d- did the credits uh, got the script or whatever they did the credits from, my character was not in the script because it was never in the script. And I think that's why it was just overlooked. Now, that's happened a lot in Hollywood. I've, I've heard of stories like this before. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I've gotten so many questions about that. And it's it's always so interesting. I didn't never even thought anyone would even know I was in that movie. I don't think you probably realized at the time that that would lead you into a lot of other cult films later on, did it? No, I had no idea. You were how old then? Um, I was 22, I think, at the time. And one film that a lot of people know, uh, you started with somebody else that I uh, interviewed, which we love, which is Mary Warnoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, You were in Sugar Cookies. Right. How was that? Um, you know, Mary, I love Mary. Mary and I actually had dinner together a couple of weeks ago, and um, we've, you know, kept in touch, and we were trying trying to write a, a script together, actually. And, um, you know, it was the first movie I did that had really any nudity in it. So working with her was great because she was very relaxed about it and um, she put me at ease and just you know really gave me a lot of support yeah. and uh, then the chemistry between us you know was very good and we're both very good actresses so we were able to pull it off um, but it was uncomfortable in the beginning because it's you know it's weird to just take off all your clothes and at first, everybody stares at you. And of course, you know, there's always... After, like, ten hours, everyone's just, like, stepping over you to get to the light. <laughs> so they don't care anymore what you look like. They just want to get the shot and go home, you Of know? course, at first, there's always more people on the set that day than there should be. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. Well, that's one thing. Mary definitely doesn't have a problem with nudity. She told us, she said, I have no problem getting naked. <laughs> yeah. No, well, she had a great body, so... I mean, she still does, I'm sure, yes. but she certainly did then, so... You know, not shy. Definitely. And uh, another great film. I thought you were just totally fantastic in the remake of Cat People with Nastasha Kinski. Yeah, that was a that was a real interesting experience. Um, I uh, out of all the directors I've ever worked with, I think Paul Schrader is my least favorite. Really? Why is that? Uh, well, he is uh, very. 
demanding is not really the right word. He's very impatient. Mm -hmm. And he um, he throws a whole lot of stuff at you and, and really doesn't even give you time to absorb it. And then he just, you know, we expect you to do it right off the bat, which I'm really pretty good at, and I managed to to pull that off. But um, he just wasn't very, oh, you know, didn't give you really a lot of inspiration. And then he had absolutely no consideration at all for the difficulty that they were having with me having to fall down the stairs so many times, which um, actually I got really hurt. And, you know, they just kept wanting me to do it again and again because they couldn't get the cat paw to work right. Wow. And they couldn't get the bra to pop open at the bottom of the stairs right. And the first time I went down the stairs, they forgot to take the nails out. So Ooh. I thought my hands were all cut up and they had to take me to get a tetanus shot. And then, you know, he was mad at me because I had to go get the tetanus shot and they had to stop shooting, stuff like that. Wow. But but I must say it's a it's a quite wonderful theme and it's gotten me a lot of exposure and attention and in the long run I think I made more money on that particular movie than on anything I've ever done. Mm. So it actually did pay off. That's well, so often we hear stories about this. We had Beverly Randolph on from Return of the Living Dead and they wanted her to go up the steps and fall and uh Daniel Banyan, the director, actually put in a fake step and didn't tell her because they wanted her to really fall. I oh, guess no. stuff like this happens a lot, huh? Yeah. See, that is so not cool yeah. to do that because, you know, if you're a good actress, you can you can fall, you know, if you need to. Was that your only bad experience on a set? Um, yeah, you know, I, I was really very lucky in working with Romero and Cronenberg and you know, all those really great people, Jonathan Demme. Everybody I worked with has just been a doll on the set. And um, I've really, you know, enjoyed, you know, you, you have little glitches every now and then. Like when we did I Drink Your Blood, the, the makeup man was kind of a lecherous guy. And he, uh, we have this one shot in the beginning of the movie where everybody is shot from the back and everybody's nude. And the makeup man t told all the women that we had to have all of our boobs made up because they made <laughs> up. oh my god, he made up all of our boobs, and then of course he didn't see the boobs. So you know, little little things like that happen, but you know they just become kind of funny stories after a while. I know somebody; it's a makeup artist on a porn set. They don't even make up your boobs on a porn set. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned George. God, he's one of my favorite people. He's such a sweetheart, and, and you did the crazies, and that was kind of a controversial role, wasn't it? Yeah, it actually. I mean, it's funny because all these movies that I did back then, I didn't consider, and I didn't really think anyone else considered them to be controversial or even memorable and uh, it seems like as time went by people began to take more and more notice of them and um, I think now that movie is actually really prevalent uh, for what's going on in the world and, and it really I think works a lot better now than it did and they did a really good job cleaning it up Blue Underground that put out the, the DVD on it, and they did a really nice 14-minute interview with me um, about my career and everything, which is very, very nice. So um, it was, a, it was a, a hard part to do because um, I had to be crazy from really the very beginning, but I didn't want the audience to know that. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out a way to kind of inch it along, you know, until they finally realized. And then, of course, the rape scene with the father is very disturbing. Uh, it was, a, and it was very disturbing for Richard and me to do. But you know, we're actors, so. Was there any controversy out of that? Did you get any flack from it? You know, again, not at the time. It's like <laughs> nobody even saw the movie that that I even never spoke to. Um, you know, that's the funny thing about about these movies that I've done and I've, I've explained this before because so many people have said, you know, well, where did you go? Where, what have you been doing? And, um, you know, I did these movies and then I kind of never used them to promote myself in any way because I didn't feel that, th that those movies were really very good. Yeah. 
so I wanted to go more into mainstream, and I just kind of moved away from the horror genre. And I did, you know, Fighting Mad with Jonathan Demme, and I did, you know, some soap operas and um, some TV movies of the week and stuff like that, but nothing ever really took off. And then about three or four years ago, I was sitting at the Internet, and I thought, I'm going to look up my name and see if there's anything on me. And I typed my name in, and like, you know, like 50 pages came up. And I thought, oh, my God, who's this? You know, and I started looking, and I realized I had this, like, big fan base, and, you know, that these people all knew me, and I was this genre, you know, cult actress and and it was quite exciting so i had actually really a brand new career start because even though i had never given up acting i really more was doing theater work and my singing work yeah and not really pursuing films that's one thing about cult films is you don't really think they're popular and then later on you realize that there's just all these loyal people out there and they are the most loyal of fans of cult i know people. they're terrific Absolutely. I don't know if you ever saw 48 Days. I think that was a total rip-off of the crazies. Um, I don't think I saw that. Basically the same plot. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me ask you one, because I know when we had interviewed Mary, because you were just talking about how, you know, you had kind of left it to do mainstream for a while. When we had interviewed Mary, she had kind of explained her roles in, in cult films is that she kind of plays to what she calls the theater of the ridiculous and that she kind of does it all tongue-in-cheek. Is that kind of how you've looked at kind of like the cult horror side of it as opposed to mainstream? Or do you agree with what she says in that side? Or do you think um, that it's both kind of the same kind of a deal for mainstream and horror? No, I, I think Mary Mary has a very comedic sense about her. Um, she's just... You know, she's tall, and she's got a kind of a funny delivery for the way she does lines and things. Mm -hmm. um, I try to take each character for what it is. I mean, the character I just played in Basement Jack that ja uh, that uh, Michael Shelton directed, mm -hmm. which is about a serial c killer, and I play um, the serial killer's mother. And without giving too much away, I'm the reason he's the serial killer. <laughs> right. So um, even though I do have a few kind of funny lines, she's not funny. And so I, I look now, in the movie I'm doing right now, I actually have quite a few funny lines in it. And I am a killer in Psychosomatica. But I don't look at uh, cult genre work as being tongue-in-cheek. I, I just look at it as being whatever whatever the character is. Right. But I think Mary has been cast uh, so often in that type of role that she kind of has become, you know, known for that. And you actually, if I'm right, and I hope I'm right, because I just want to see this movie, uh, you're going to be in a remake of the Dunwich Horror? Yes. Um, I'm doing that with um, uh, Ted Marr and Richard Green. Uh, I'm sorry, Richard Griffith. Richard Griffin uh, in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. I did a film with them last year called Splatter Disco, which I think should be coming out uh, towards the end of this year, I believe. Yeah, it has to be a throwback to the 70s, right? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Wow. It's a real, you know, it's, 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 and actually Mary was, was uh, supposed to be cast in the role that I ended up doing, and she couldn't do it because she had this trip planned, so she recommended me. And so they took me. And it was funny because a lot of the lines were written. I could just have seen Mary saying them that way because mm -hmm. they were written that kind of tongue-in-cheek way. Mm -hmm. So, But the Dunwich Horror is um, slated for December. They're actually shooting already, but I think I'm going up in December to shoot. Um, I'm playing the librarian who knows all the information. Are you familiar with the original? You know, I'm not. I'm I'm going to get the book um, and read it because I have not really. I've been so busy. I haven't really had time to really get into that yet. Well, busy is the word because I was very surprised to find out that you not only do your your movie thing and you're working all the time, but you're a singer too, and you're actually doing a show next Friday. Yes, I am at Mr. B uh, in Ho in the North Hollywood. It's um. Burbank Boulevard and Hollywood Way, and I have a wonderful jazz trio, and 
we do all the songs from the 30s and 40s and I I wear fabulous clothes and <laughs> tell lots of jokes and it's a really a lot of fun. Now do you find that you get, you know, straight music fans coming to that or do a lot of your horror and cult movie fans come to see you know, Lynn sing? Mostly just the music fans have been coming but um but Jeff brought uh, a lot of people from the crew uh, on this film came to my last show and are coming next week and they've kind of spread the word so more of my fans might actually show up. Oh wow. So how was it working with my buddy Ken and Jay Hall? Oh I liked Ken. You know, he was great. He um he was very specific in what he needed. You know, I actually you've seen a night visit, right? Uh no, not actually oh, okay. Yet. Ken is supposed to be getting it either. screener. <laughs> we have They're screening it. it tomorrow at Shriekfest. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go see it tomorrow. Okay, where's that at in LA? Uh yeah, it's at the um uh what studio is that at? Shriekfest? It's on Melrose at the Raleigh Studios. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Ken was a very good director, knew just what he wanted, and um, we spent a long time on that four minutes, so I think it should be pretty intense. You actually did a little like St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were up like all night till about five in the morning. They were real worried because I have to scream a lot, and they were worried the neighbors were going to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> Because I scream pretty loud. Well, you know, Kevin was definitely devoted to what he was doing because he was complaining about not being able to be in a bar at St. Patrick's Day, but he was oh. having more fun with you. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Cronenberg. What was he like? Um, you know, when I worked with David Cronenberg, uh, he was just, it was his first movie, and he was... And that was? Uh, sh Shivers. Mm -hmm. uh, first call, they came from within. And then before that, it was called the, Par the Paradox Complex. I think that was the first title. But, um, you know, as, as unusual as David's films are, everyone expects him to be really weird. But he's just not. <laughs> he was just a, the guy next door, you know. Wow. Really sweet, easy to work with, creative, let you do, you know, what you wanted to do. If, if you, you know, come back. Because uh, cause Jeff, Jeff wants to say hello. Uh, oh, sure. Hello, okay. So come back. <laughs> um, and um, I had no problems, you know, with David. I heard he was really strict. I mean, totally wouldn't let you do any improvising, and it was very harsh. Oh, no. I, he, he let me do whatever I wanted. I mean, you know, I just had to be this nurse who goes crazy. Which, you know, I do that pretty well. <laughs> is that fun? Oh. It has to be fun. You know, I mean, he was, you know, there's there's that famous story about how he slapped, you know, the actress um, to get her to cry. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But, you know, she asked him to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, she, she couldn't cry, and she had to cry in the movie a lot. So they would go off, and he would, I don't know what they would do, but she'd come back in, and she'd be crying. Wow. And one time I had to had a, have an emotional scene, and David came over and he said, you know, do you need any help? And I said, no, David, I can act. <laughs> yeah. like, we're not going to do that method thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to be slapped. <laughs> Maybe David liked it. He was hoping to be able to do it some more. I don't know. I, you know, I think there might have been a side to him that might have, you know, at least been been interested in exploring that because that does seem to come up in a lot of his films <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to being mistreated as an extra and, and then I often hear a lot of times main actors and actresses have stories too it's amazing yeah but people don't understand there's a lot of pressure on a set a lot of money involved and you know you got that going on people get a little you know a little crazy at times yeah it, it was you know again for me, the scenes I were in went re pretty well. Um, with when Paul Hampton and I worked together, sometimes they took a little longer. But um, and, and you know, I, somebody they they just did an interview on me for the documentary for for Shivers. These these Canadian people, mm -hmm. and they were asking me about Paul, and I, I always kind of thought that Paul and I didn't really have a whole lot of chemistry together in the movie. 
But after really seeing the movie several times, I realized that really his emotional level in the movie is perfect because he's just kind of deadpan. But how else could you respond to, you know, all this stuff that's going on around you? So, I mean, there's so much happening. I think that actually the way he played it was perfect. Well, you know, talk about people and then the way they are. I heard stories about Nastasia Kinski being a bit crazy because we, we know her dad was definitely a little out there. So how was she in Cat you People? No, I never worked with her on the film. Okay. Uh, I only worked with the... With the phony cat paw. So you, you didn't like? <laughs> she didn't. You didn't see her hang around on a set or anything then. No, I. I think. I mean, I met her when we were in New Orleans. I met her, uh, but it was just kind of a hello, you know. Yeah. She seemed, you know, fine. What about Malcolm McDowell? Did you run into him at all? Um, I got to meet Malcolm. You know, I was sorry I didn't get to, to have scenes with these people. M- my, um, I was in the dressing room. And Malcolm McDowell walked in the dressing room, and he dropped his robe and was totally nude, (laughs) and then reached his hand over, and he said, Hello, I'm Malcolm McDowell. (laughs) You know, I mean, he'd come in to get, you know, body makeup on. He was just, you know, like, just so unshy, you know, and I was like, Oh, my God, Clockwork Orange, you know. (laughs) Such a big fan, you know, and, you know, where do you look, you know, the whole thing is standing right in front of you. But he was very sweet, very nice. That is hilarious. I love that. <laughs> wow. So uh, what about Dead Things? What's that about? Um, you know, Dead Things is a trilogy. And um, uh, I actually had a very small part in it. That, that was really kind of my beginning of my comeback movies. I um, I play really the neighbor who lives next door. Mm-hmm. And I come over and have coffee with Brink, who is the witch. Mm-hmm. And that's really all I do is just kind of chit-chat. You know, how you doing? Here's yeah. coffee, you know. So my part's really not very interesting, you know, in, in that, uh, you know, as to what I like to do. Uh, but, I, but I've but i heard that it's coming along nicely, and I think that Dana, uh, D.T. Carney, is working on something else presently, which uh, he asked me to be in, but it um, coincided with Psychosomatica, so I couldn't do it. So what do you have coming up that we might not know about? Because I know, like, for instance, you know, word doesn't always get out of Internet Movie Database or whatever. And well, um, I'm really excited about Basement Jack coming out because I have a very nice part in that. And um, they just finished. We just wrapped that last week. And um, there's there's been some talk about trying to do um, a remake of I Drink Your Blood, Ooh. Ooh. which I'm very excited about. So we're presently working on a script and trying to, you know, and there seems to be a lot of interest in that. Have they asked you? Well, actually, I'm kind of in charge. Oh, oh. oh so you're going to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I have a really good synopsis already, and um, Brian O'Toole, who produced Basement Jack, has shown some interest in uh, possibly uh, writing the treatment for it and maybe trying to get involved. This is kind of like revenge for that uncredited part in the first <laughs> one, right? Now you're in charge. <laughs> right. right. Now, are you, are you considering maybe directing it? I mean, what is, are you wanting to do behind the scenes, too, or are you wanting to just be in front of the camera? You or? know, I'd like to, you know, maybe like be executive producer or something like that, but I definitely want to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really, really different than the first one. I mean, it's got the same main idea, but it's different characters. Right. That beat, by the way, is Elvira. <laughs> she uh, That beat that you may or may not be hearing is our call waiting thing. It's Elvira because she, like, missed her time tonight, and I think she's trying to get through. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's all right. That's I'm, all right. I'm enjoying talking to you. Well, well, I wanted you to say hello to Jeff for a sec. So okay. Let me just put it. Do, do you want to uh, do you want to say hello to her first? Or? No, no, no. We'll do her in a little bit. She knows okay. Let's put Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Okay. Hello? Hey, Jeff. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Wow, long time no talk. I know, long time no talk. That was, that was ironic. She's like, I'm leaving with Jeff Dylan Graham. I'm like, wow, it is really a small world. <laughs> it is definitely a small world. <laughs> for, for those uh, that don't know, that they be the one person that might have bought the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jeff Dylan Graham, who was Tiffany's uh, boyfriend in Dorm of the Dead. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, I don't think I, I wasn't her boyfriend, but uh, I played her boyfriend in Homesick. In Dorm of the Dead, I was just a sleazebag. Oh, oh, okay. I thought they were talking about Tiffany Shepard. No. You were talking about Tiffany Defoe. I'm Tiffany sorry. Defoe. Now I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were the one that I had to sit there and watch trying to get into my daughter's pants. <laughs> oh, I know. And you know how awkward that was? It was, it was very uncomfortable for me, too. I can't imagine. I thought you were going to kill me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Have you got, like, any word from Dorm of the Dead? I mean, do you think anybody actually ever bought it? Or? I don't know if anybody ever bought it. I kind of, you know, I don't want to say anything bad, but I, I kind of hope nobody bought it. <laughs> 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 yeah, we kind of agree. It's okay. <laughs> so what's this, this thing that you're doing now with the lady we just got done talking to, which is Lynn Lowry? Um, it's a movie called Psychosomatica. Um, I wrote it, and I'm directing it. I'm also um, acting in it as well. Wow. And Lynn plays an amazing, she's so amazing in this. I can't wait for people to see it. Um, she's just this, this strange Southern Belle uh, character. She's great. Um, we've got a lot of other names, uh, Debbie Rashawn, uh, Brink Stevens, Peter Stickle. Oh, nobody's. Huh? So, just a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's been coming out great. I can't wait for people to see it. Well, you're, you're doing pretty good for somebody that started out doing a trauma film. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Jeff, we should stay in touch, and maybe when Psychosomatica gets ready to come out, we can have you and some more of your cast on the show. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Keep me in mind. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right, well, it was nice talking to you. It was nice talking to you, too. Yep, yeah, you have a good night. You, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, he's, he's a fun guy. What? Jeff is a fun guy. Yes, he is. He's great. And, and he loves the whole cult thing, too. I mean, he's, you know, it, it takes a person that really loves what they're doing. And oh, yeah. And this and the film looks just phenomenal, what they've done with it. It's got a, just a wonderful look yeah. to it. So. That sounds good. Well, I better let you go because we keep getting beat from Elvira here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God, it was so great talking well, to you, Lynn. It was my pleasure. And like I told Jeff, you know, maybe closer to when Psychosomatica gets ready to come out, maybe we can have him and some cast members, and maybe you can come back on then, too. Sure. That'd be great. Right, that'd be good. Good luck with your show and, and happy and, well, birthday. Oh, wait. Let's let her. Oh, yeah. By the way, happy is it really birthday. your birthday? Well, my birthday's on October 15th, but the show is on the 12th. Well, uh-huh. happy early birthday. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, and let's tell everybody when your show is again, because, that, you know, just in case they didn't hear the uh, it's, beginning. It's Friday, October 12th at Mr. B, and that's in um, Burbank, and it's on uh, Burbank Boulevard in Hollywood Way. Very good. And can they buy it? Just, is there, like, a cover? They buy tickets to the No, door? there's no cover, and it's um, actually just... The food's good, and the drinks are good, and the show's great. That's awesome. And if Malcolm McDowell shows up, he'll be the one that drops his robe. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Lynn. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.